Hey, what's up, guys? It is DFS Up North uh, from DFS Army, and we are here with the Where's My Turds At podcast. Uh, I'm going to be your host today since my boy Geek is heading down to the King of the Beach final in Miami. Pretty excited for him. It should be uh, a great uh, weekend. Uh, excited to hopefully help him win a, a big chunk of change here and uh, get, a, get a big live final win for uh, DFS Army. Uh, so tonight, uh, the Where's My Turds At game of the week the Thursday night games Indianapolis Colts at Houston this is truly a where's my turds at game this is a very frustrating game uh because it's there's a lot of injury situations that we have to sort through uh and it's a lot of okay if this guy plays then this guy's a good option if uh you know if this guy doesn't play then this guy becomes available and, and we need to increase our exposure there so we really have to treat this game a little bit like it's NBA tonight. So uh, 7.15 game time, I believe. So that means that we're going to get inactives at about 5.45. Uh, we might get some more information about who's warming up on the fields and things like that beforehand. So we, we really just need to keep an eye on, on, on who's playing, who's not, who's healthy, who's not, as we lead up to lock. Uh, if you are building uh, like 150 lineups in the DS, what you need to do is run your run – your, uh, lineups right now or whenever you're going to do it today after this video uh and then leave that browser screen open all right so that all your settings are still in there everything's set up right uh and let's say you know you set it up for ty hilton playing tonight well let's say that hilton ends up being inactive okay now we just uncheck him uh you can go in quick and maybe give zach pascal a, a little bit of a bump and now we run it again, you're good to go. It takes you five, 10 minutes, right? Instead of having to go back in and reset everything up, you gotta leave that browser window open so that you can go back in on the DS and uh, and get it set up. Uh, same thing for for FanDuel, all right? Uh, we're gonna, so today I'm gonna talk through kind of the kind of the slate here, kind of talk about some of the, uh, some of the, uh, some of the games uh, and or some of the players here and, and kind of how I see roster construction going. And then we're going to look at super draft uh, because of uh, new this week, we've added uh, some super draft targets on the bottom of the FanDuel page. So uh, look at that. We'll go over and make some lineups over on super draft and, uh, and see what that looks like. Again, the overlay there isn't quite what it was at the beginning of the season, but it's still a fun site to play on uh, the, I don't think the competition's quite as sharp over there. Uh, we've had some guys do really well. So uh, excited about uh, Super Draft and, and, and playing over there tonight. So if we look at, let's start with the DK page. All right. Uh, kind of my captain pool tonight is going to be Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, Jacoby Brissett, Hilton if he plays, Williams, and Johnson, Duke Johnson. So here's my thought process here. We got a 46 game to a point total, four point spread. Uh, the, the Texans are favored. I think that this is, I, I really think that's probably pretty close. It, it's feasible that it goes over on, um, but we have a, a Texans defense. That's not good. And against a Colts offense, that's not that good. And now you have without Marlon Mack, and now you have a Texans offense. That's pretty good. It might get Will Fuller back against a very good Colts defense. So, uh, you know, what's, what's going to give tonight. Um, with all the injury news, uh, Watson and Hopkins are going to be my two favorite captains. Uh, I think that they are the safest plays that also have the highest floors. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, Watson put a 20 spot up against these guys earlier in the year. He's at home, got drilled by the Ravens last week. I think he's going to be ready to prove that, um, he wants to, uh, wants to, that he's still a capable quarterback and, and one of the top teams in the league. So I, I see him throwing the ball 35 or more times tonight. I think he's going to rush the ball a little bit. Uh, Will Fuller's a game time decision. If he's back, that actually increases my, that I want to increase my exposure to Watson and Hopkins. I think Fuller coming back actually helps Hopkins. It's going to reduce his target share a little bit, but he's going to get better at matchups and, and, and be less bracketed all over the field. Um, so I really like Watson. I think he's got a floor of 17, 18. I think he's got a 30 point ceiling here. Um, I think that 300 and a touchdown or two is, 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 is a pretty standard projection here. I think that uh, if we look here, if I go to DFS army, um, we're going to see that he is, I think that John's, uh, statsational's model here 
has a little bit a uh, little bit less high on the passing game than I am. Uh, if you're not using this, again, this is something that you should be a part of your daily process. You can find it on the Beat the Bookie site. If you're just a member of DFS Army, you do have access to this. So let's look at this week's projections, what John's got for this game. Yeah, so he's got a little bit um, 24-22, so right on that 46-point total. He's got Indianapolis covering, um, which uh, I think is, is probably a fair bet. Uh, has the rushing yards a little bit higher. I think that they're, they're going to pass a little bit more here. I think that uh, just with Marlon Mack being out uh, and Carlos Hyde being a corpse, um, I think that this will be uh, a little bit more passing. But, hey, you never know. Uh, that's kind of the angle I'm taking. If you want to hammer home the, the running backs here, go for it, right? Uh, follow this, and, and you, you could be successful there too. So Watson, my probably my favorite. I, I don't have a core captain piece today, but I think that if I was going to – uh, it might actually be DeAndre Hopkins. His target share has been insane. So, uh, you know, he's had at least 11 targets every week going back to week five. Um, and, you know, I think that he he torched the Colts earlier this year. I, th- this is a – he's a beast, right? You just – I mean, he could have 11, 11 catches for 170 yards and two TDs, and that, that wouldn't surprise me, right? Um, so I think he's due for a breakout game at some point, prime time tonight, short week. Uh, I really like I really like the spot for Hopkins. I think Brissett's a decent captain play. Um, he seems to slowly be getting back to form. He doesn't have Marlon Mack. That didn't matter last week, uh, but, you know, I think that – uh against the jaguars and, and the texans are are a little bit better against the uh, run than the jags but they're also uh very 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 susceptible to the pass so i think that uh the way i see this game going is houston scoring early Brissett having to having to throw the ball a little bit and i think that brings him into play uh in the captain ty hilton loves playing against the texans right Loves playing in Houston in the Dome. I don't like him on the road. He has that narrative that he's better at home. But, uh, again, on the road in Texas, he's got great history here. Uh, if he is healthy tonight, I want I want some T.Y. Hilton. So I think that in, in the captain spot, you know, I can play him there. I can play Brissett. I can throw in a, a cheap Jonathan Williams or Jordan Wilkins, get my, get my exposure to the Colts there, and then run it back with, um, you know, uh, whether it's Hopkins, if you pay up for Watson, you're probably not going to be able to get a Hopkins. So you, you might have to rely on like the third uh, tight ends here. Uh, the running back situation for the the Colts is, is interesting. Uh, we have three capable backs and Jordan Wilkins, Jonathan Williams, and Naheem Hines. All right. Uh, the way that Frank Reich head coach has talked about is that uh, Wilkins will be back healthy this week and that him and Williams will, uh, split the carries here. Um, and then Naeem, Naeem Hines will still play that sort of slot receiver, scat back, uh, pass catching running back role. So uh, Williams last week in, in relief of uh, Marlon Mack was electric. He had a hundred and some yards, what do we got? 116 yards. He had a 31 yard catch. Like the guy looked good. Jordan Wilkins has never done that in his life. Like he's shitty. So he's literally a turd. I don't think he's a turd you want to play. So he's been, I really hope that they give Williams the carries here, but I don't trust NFL head coaches. They're morons. They, 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 they refuse to believe analytics. They don't, they don't always make the right decision, but whatever. I'm not a coach. Um, So I, I like Williams quite a bit here. I think that the Houston defense is susceptible to the run. I think he's an interesting captain candidate because you can run Williams here and then just stack it up with Texans uh, skill players. Uh, so I, I like him. I don't, I don't, it, it, I don't, I don't, I hope it's not a 50, 50. I hope it's a 70, 30 split for, for the running backs here with Williams getting the 70 and Wil- Wilkins getting the 30. But again, I just don't trust NFL coaches. Like if I, if, if I thought that he was going to get more, I'd bump this percentage up, you know, 15, 20% in the captains in the captain role, just because of the price. I think it makes a lot of sense, but, Again, like I don't, I don't trust it. So five to ten percent, I'm I'm covering myself. Uh, this is why you MME showdowns. This is why single bullets don't always work. You can do it, but like to cover scenarios, you need to at like 15, 20 lineups. It, even better, go for 150, right? Uh, Duke Johnson, uh, we've we've kind of been on this trend lately in these in these primetime showdown games where these secondary backs have been. Uh, in the nuts, right? So LaShawn McCoy last week, whether it's an injury or they just get more run, they they have an explosive play, things like that. So that's kind of where I'm at here with Duke, Duke Johnson. I believe he's the better back. Um, 
yards per carry would would agree with me there. He's been crushing. He's good catching the ball. You're not going to be able to run on the Colts right up the middle, right? So you need to get out. You need to be able to, you know, get the ball to the outside. And I think that's where Duke Johnson really excels. I think he's good at making people miss. Um, he's just not likely to get as much run as he should because we have Carlos Hyde there. So this is just a, a, a 5 to 10% uh dart in gpp i think he's a great flex play um but you know captain at his price so if the game flow goes where he gets a touchdown and 60 some yards and a couple of receptions uh at his price if this you can fit in some studs and if the studs do well well now we have a you know a legitimate captain play uh as long as you know hopkins doesn't have 50 you know 50 dk points which he's capable of doing so five to ten percent here on duke johnson i think he's a fantastic flex play uh, as we go down, uh, Zach Pascal has been pretty mediocre the last couple weeks. Uh, I, I think if TY comes back, I actually like him more, um, because he's not the number one guy. Um, but if, if TY is out, I think we need to give him some consideration in the captain's fight. I don't think you need to, but I don't think you need to do it. I just think you have to consider it, maybe get a couple of percentage points there. But I, I really like Pascal if, uh ty is back i think that it, it opens up some stuff for him uh because he's not a number one that's just not his skill set uh will fuller the f- fifth is looking like he's going to be a game time decision it's possible that he plays we need to remember if he's healthy the type of player that he was earlier in the year like he was getting massive numbers so will fuller plays i like uh, i think it i think it increases my exposure to to deshaun watson for sure I don't really want to have him the captain spot because I think that he could absolutely go out, play three plays, and 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 reiterate an injury and be done. That's the type of player he is, um, or actually the type of player he is is it, he is is one that would go out and get a completely separate injury after three three plays. So uh, he's he's fine, ten to fifteen percent if he's active. Uh, I don't want to go nuts because I think there is that risk of re-injury here. Carlos Hyde, like he's been very good in blowouts. Okay, they they pound the rock with them. But in these close games, he's he's outside of KC where they had you know kind of a shootout and Hyde scored early. Like he's been very non-existent. So uh, if you think this is going to be a blowout, load up on Hyde. If you don't, I think that you want to look at Duke Johnson here uh, as the as the the better the higher upside back. Um, you know, I he's last week he was averaging two point two yards a carry and then busted one for 41 yards. That's kind of what he's been doing here lately to save his stat lines. If he doesn't bust one, like his average yards per carry is very, very poor. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm lower on Hyde than others. I think at 7,000, I think you can make it work, but I just don't want to target running backs really uh, against, um, against the Colts. So Jordan Wilkins, you see that 2.73 projection. I think that's a little low. Um, I think that he is going to get quite a bit of, of work here just because, like I said, I don't trust NFL coaches. I think he's going to get 12, 13, you know, touches, maybe uh, probably, uh, probably around 10. Uh, so I think he's viable at this price. Kenny Stills, his value really takes a hit if Fuller's out. He's been okay. His breakthrough game was against the Colts. I think he can really pass in the Colts. So I think he's in play. Hines, uh, uh, I've wanted Naheem Hines to be really good since he came into the league. He just never quite gets it done. Um, I think he's got eight, nine, ten point floor with with the pass catching. If he busts one, they they ran him at the goal line last week, which I thought was weird. Um, but uh, when Mac went out, so maybe he gets some of that work. Uh, but yeah, I think that Naheem Hines is in play. Ebron, oh weird, another guy that's got an injury concern. He's trending towards playing. They really didn't even practice this week, neither team. So they don't have real participation reports. Um, so he was listed as a full participant. Um, but we'll see. If he's out, I really like Jack Doyle. If he's in, uh, 5 10% each. Uh, Jack Doyle, if he's out, though, could smash. Uh, Marcus Johnson, again, uh, I, if, he, if Hilton's out, he's not anything more than a punt play been good the last two weeks he's out snap chester rogers almost two to one um running out of the slot so he should still get some work here but uh not much more than a punt play uh defense texas defense is super spotty i talk about here how i really like that i like the colts d even though i see the texans winning here um watts uh deshaun watson takes sacks he's able to throw he throws picks um both both running backs here are fumble prone um i think the colts d could really smash here in a spot where they're not going to be highly owned uh both these kickers are bad 
All right. They're both around 75% for the year on uh, field goals and around the same on extra points, which is just not good. I think this is kind of the end of the road here for Adam Vinatieri. Um, they're playable. Uh, I think they're more playable on DK than they are on FanDuel. This is a Thursday night, right? We know one kicker is going to get like six six field goals and be in the nuts. So do you need some exposure? Trying to figure out the, the tight end situation for the Texans is always a mess. Darren Fells leads the league in tight end touchdowns, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but what I have, he's six TDs on the year while averaging 26 yards a game. That's insane. So he's really touchdown or bust. Jordan Aikens, same thing. Uh, he's not, he hasn't been scoring touchdowns. So, I mean, you could fade Aikens entirely, but he's going to be super low owned as everybody goes to fell. So, I mean, Aikens is playing enough snaps that he could catch a touchdown pass. Um, and if he does, he, he breaks the slate. So you need some exposure here in MME. Chester Rogers really been replaced by Marcus Johnson in the slot. He, He's a vet. He could get involved again. He's been good in the past. So, I mean, get some exposure to him uh, in MME. If we look at the FanDuel side, um, pretty similar. One interesting thing that you can do on FanDuel here is, is uh, you know, you need the highest score in the MVP slot. Um, and I feel like that is easier predict to predict on FanDuel. Now, um, this is a, obviously a dangerous strategy to do, but... Like if you wanted to, like Deshaun Watson's our highest projected player, right? Salary doesn't matter because there's no multiplier. Um, so Deshaun Watson is projected for the most points. If you wanted to run 150 lineups with Deshaun Watson at your captain or at your MVP and just get uh, exposure everywhere else, like and try to fill out all those combinations, uh, honestly, like I, I don't mind that strategy at all. Um, I have everybody else in here listed with some other exposures. I think Brissett, you know, obviously this is a, a team that you can pass on. I think he could end up being the guy. Um, but uh, just kind of narrowing down your MVP pool here and then trying to wear out the combinations elsewhere. Like, I, I really do like that strategy. Um, so, uh, again, pretty similar stuff here. I'm trying to see if there's anybody that is a – I thought I had somebody written in here that he was a great – uh, fan duel price, uh, Jordan Wilkins at 6,500, I think is a really good fan duel price for him. Um, you know, uh, again, I think you can, uh, Naeem Hines at 10 K. I think you can like fully fade on fan duel with only the half point PPR. Um, I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, let's see if I got anybody else here. Oh, Johnson's a good, a decent fan duel price. Will Fuller, like if Will Fuller plays, I think you can absolutely smash, smash him on fan duel. So super draft. This is, if you scroll down here, we have the super draft targets here um, that we are looking at or that I'm looking at over on super draft. So my core champion, like the guy that I want the multiplier, Jonathan Williams. Understand that, you know, this could be a 50-50 split, but if I'm making two lineups, I'm going to have Jordan, Jonathan Williams in one there, and I'm going to have Jordan Wilkins in the other. All right. Um, at 4.5, like both these guys feasibly could have 50, 60 yards and a touchdown at 4.5. They absolutely smash. Um, we're talking 50, 60 points. So uh, I do really like them there. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, 2.1 for a quarterback is a fantastic multiplier um, in that champion spot. So our super draft projection has about 34.69 points total. Uh, it, and that's, you know, I think that he could obviously exceed that. So I really do like Jacoby Brissett there. Uh, I don't mind Deshaun Watson. I, you know, I mean, we're talking about floors here, right? I don't, I like Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins again, 1.8. That's not bad. He could easily break that 30 point barrier. Uh, Duke Johnson with a three, three multiplier. Naeem Hines with four. finitary has been shitty, but 3.6, like at, for a kicker, like super draft kickers are always in play. Uh, so if I was going to make a lineup off this, I do think you want some correlation here. So if I'm going to play, let's see, I'm going to put in Jonathan Williams at my champion, right? 4.45. If, if for some reason he gets all the run tonight, like he's going to smash. Uh, so Jonathan Williams. So if, if he's running the ball, right, it's not likely that the rest of the, um, the rest of like Brissett, those guys aren't necessarily probably going to crush. So I will add Deshaun Watson. Um, let's see. DeAndre Hopkins is such a low multiplier, but he could have a big day. Um, so I like to pair running backs and kickers together on, on super draft. I think they kind of go hand in hand, uh, you know, so we can go Jonathan Williams, uh, with Adam Vinatieri, even though Vinatieri's not been good, he is indoors, which helps. 
Um, there's uh, there's somebody else down here I wanted to play. Um, you could get crazy and play Jordan Wilkins in the same lineup. I mean, both could smash. Both have huge multipliers. So uh, if you think that Williams is going to be the guy, right? Um, actually, I kind of do like this lineup. Let's add Hopkins in here. Like, uh, I got I got the Watson Hopkins connection. So we're saying that Watson and Hopkins are going to have a huge game while the Colts smash the run. Well, if we look at Stasational's power rankings, uh, he's got Indianapolis for 125. Like that, that could feasibly be the case. So we cover our butts with both of these. Uh, running backs, let's say they both score a touchdown. If Wilkins and, and Williams both score a touchdown tonight, I think they're absolutely in the super draft nuts together. Um, so we got that. You know what I mean? So that's one way to kind of go about your lineup. Uh, so I need to click on that. If you want to go, uh, you know, Colts running or Colts passing game, right? We go Brissett here. Let's say... Like Marcus Johnson as a punt, he's got a pretty decent multiplier here. Uh, the other side of the ball, let's say, where's Hyde? Hyde's at 1.7. Duke Johnson at 2, I like. Uh, he doesn't get that 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 PPR. He gets a half PPR. Let's go Fairbairn. And let's, let me see what else we got here. Kenny Stills at 2.5 is very interesting. Um, or we could run double QB. Deshaun Watson, right? Could go stills, right? So if we go stills, we're assuming that uh, Watson doesn't have a big game. And if he does, it's not, you know, that one X multiplier ain't going to do it for you. Stills, two and a half, catches the touchdown, 50 yards. He could easily be in there too. So kind of how I'm going about things on, on Super Draft tonight. Uh, you know, again, there's not been as much overlay. The prize pools have gone down a little bit, but uh, it's still a fun site to play on. And I like the the multiplier and how that kind of changes our strategy here. So uh, that's all I've got for today. Uh, again, we need to watch the lock tonight. So you need to be on lock on uh, or not lock. We need to watch the the injury reporting about 545 central time. Be on it. Uh, we can make adjustments again. If you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, good luck geek in the uh, King of the beach final. Um, so, uh, we'll also have players club tonight. I believe it's me, uh, statsational and Burnsy coming off his big win in the Millie maker. Talk about that. Uh, we'll have players club tonight working on my GPP sheet for, uh, DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, it's kind of a pay down at QB week for me. So, uh, kind of built some interesting GPP builds from there. So uh, I'm excited to finish that sheet for you guys. And, uh, and we got golf going on right now too. So it's been a busy week for me. I'm um, looking forward to showdown night and uh, playing with you guys. So uh, have a great, have a great week, uh, great afternoon and looking forward to uh, hopefully somebody winning some big money tonight. Thanks.